So here we go, guys. Ah, these types of questions. So guys, these types of questions are when they give you the angle. So can you see if they give you the angle, you automatically know that 26 degrees is quadrant one. So you draw yourself a triangle. Let's make a nice big triangle like that over there. All right, guys. So um, then what I do is I fill in the 26 degrees. Now you want to have a good habit of doing the following. You always want to go ahead and fill in this angle at the top. Why? Sometimes you won't have to use it, but many times these sneaky teachers, um, these sneaky teachers, can you see um, that's awesome? These teachers, they like to throw in a little angle that uses this one over here. Okay, so just go do it just in case. So that's 64 degrees because of angles in a triangle. Now we need to go put this one over P. We need to go put this on the diagram. So we know that cos, we know from grade 10 already that cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, or if you prefer, you can say x over r. So we know then that the one will be the adjacent and the p will be the hypotenuse, but you guys probably know this part by now. Um, you've been doing this since last year. And then to find this side, we just use Pythagoras, but that would give us p squared minus one. Okay, so at least now we have our triangle complete. Now, here we go, guys, cos 52. Automatically, your mind should be able to see that 52 is double 26. So that means we are going to use a double angle formula. What you don't want to do, and I've seen a lot of students doing this um, in the past is they want to do something like this. They say, oh, well, this will just be, this will just be double cos 26 because these are 52. That's not correct at all, guys. You don't want to do that. You rather want to go to your double angle formulas, which we've added down here at the bottom. Um, I hope they're nice and visible to you. So we're going to use this one over here. The anyone, anyone you like, you take your choice. I'm just going to choose... Um, I'm, I'm just going to choose the bottom one. You'll see why now. So that means that um, I'm just going to write it down for you. Cos 2 alpha is equal to 2 cos squared alpha minus 1. So what that means is that if you have cos 52, see if this is 2 alpha, then this part must only be alpha. So it will be half. So if this is a 52, then this one must be a 26. That's how these formulas work. Now, what's really nice is that we have cos 26. They gave us cos 26 um, over here. So the way that you handle this is you say 2, and then cos 26 is 1 over p. And then remember that there's a little square over there, so you can just put it there, minus 1. And so that's going to give us 2 over p squared minus 1. Um, and I think we could just leave it like that. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also write it as 2 minus p squared over p squared. But nah, who, won, who has time to do that? So let's just leave it like that. 2 over p squared um, minus 1. So 2 over p squared minus 1. Okay, and then sin 71. Now this is a question that you want to take note of. I've seen this asked quite a few times and students usually struggle with this but once you've seen this little trick they'll never be able to get you again ever check this out guys it's pretty awesome if you look at the 71 there is absolutely no way to find a 71 here 71 is not double this 71 is not half of that or double that or anything so we seem like we are pretty screwed right now. But whenever they do something like this in the exams, I want you to remember your special angles, 30, 45, and 60. One of these angles is going to save you in this question. So let's see which one it's going to be. And if you didn't see that, it's OK. Most students don't see it the first time. But now that you've seen it, they won't do it to you in the test. So check this out. 71 is the same as 45 plus 26. Ah, that's cool, eh? So 45 
plus 26. But now you might be thinking, okay, cool, that's great, Kevin, but what do we do now? Now you use one of these bad boys. Check here. So that means that the sin of 45 plus 26 is going to be sin 45 cos 26 plus cos 45 and sin 26. Now, this is easy because sin 45 and cos 45, we can just get the special triangles. And then cos 26 and sin 26, we all good because it's on the triangle. So that's how we do it. Now, special triangles, let's just write out the 45 one. So it's one, one, square root two. So that means sin 45 is going to be one over square root two, cos 26. You can get it on the triangle, or you can just remember that they've already given it to us as one over P plus cos 45 is also one over square root two. And then sin 26 is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which will be the square root of P squared minus one over P. Now, you could put all of this together. So let me show you how that would work. So can you see that if we put this together, uh, let's erase all of this quickly. If we put, let's just quickly rewrite this up here so long. So if we multiply these two parts together, that's going to be one times one at the top. And at the bottom, you're going to get square root 2p. And then on this side, you're going to get p squared minus one over square root 2p. So what I wanted to show you was that these two denominators are the same. And so we can put everything together over one denominator. So it would look something like that. And then we can say one plus the square root of p squared minus one. Now there's nothing you can do any further or there's no, you can't go any further. And so that is the answer over there.